75%. That's how many shopping carts get abandoned. If you're running an e-commerce store and you want to do better than that, then you're in the right place. In this video, I will be doing an in-depth tutorial on how to create an abandoned cart flow in Klaviyo. I know there are a few videos like this on YouTube. I watched them all. I will go much deeper than any of them, and I will explain exactly how every part of the flow works so that you are empowered to take full potential of all of the Klaviyo features and not just follow some simple templates. By the end of this video, you will feel confident that your Klaviyo flow is recovering the maximum number of abandoned carts and increasing your sales automatically while you sleep. If you're new here, my name is Casey. I run Luck & Co Agency, where we help e-commerce brands maximize their email and SMS revenue. We often 2x, 3x, and 5x our clients' email and SMS revenue, so we've got lots of tricks up our sleeves. If you want to support our team in creating more free tutorials like this one, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's dive in. Before we begin with the flow, make sure that your shopping platform integration is set up and active. To check, go to your brand name at the bottom and click on Integrations. You should see your shopping platform here in Enabled Integrations. I'm using Shopify integration, but everything in this video is applicable to any other direct integration as well. Now let's go to Flows on the left and click Create Flow. I like to start with a simple template that Klaviyo offers here called Abandoned Cart Reminder. Now, notice that the trigger for this flow is a metric called Checkout Started. For that reason, we actually call this flow Abandoned Checkout Flow because that's more accurate. The Abandoned Cart Flow is slightly different and uses a different trigger. However, when people say Abandoned Cart, in 95% of the cases, they mean this flow. So now, knowing that, let's keep going. I'm going to name my flow Abandoned Checkout YouTube and skip the tags. These are completely optional. Now click Create Flow. So the first thing we do here is check the trigger. As I mentioned, it's a metric called Checkout Started. It's important to understand what it means so you know exactly when this flow will trigger for your users. For Shopify, this means someone added a product to cart, then went to checkout, then filled out this whole first page of the checkout form and clicked continue to shipping. When this button is clicked, that's when the metric checkout started fires in Klaviyo. This checkout form is where Klaviyo grabs the email address and, very importantly, the shopper's first name. So by default, Klaviyo knows the first name of all people who abandon checkout, which means you can use that first name to personalize your messages. If you're using another shopping platform instead of Shopify, just check Klaviyo Docs to find out exactly when your metric triggers this flow. Hey, before we move forward, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video who is supporting us in bringing this content to you. Do you feel like your store should be making more revenue, but you're just not sure where to start? Let me introduce you to Blip. Blip is an automated e-commerce management platform that reveals hidden opportunities to increase revenue. They monitor your store data 24-7 and send you alerts and reports on what exactly you could do to either increase revenue or stop losing revenue. You know that with your online store, sometimes one error results in hundreds of lost customers. Blip helps you avoid that by alerting you to things like coupon abuse, broken links in your emails, higher than normal bounce rates, and so much more. They also have a direct integration with Klaviyo, so they will tell you if some subscribers are receiving too many emails or which products sell especially well or badly in your flows. Stores that use Blip see a revenue increase of 27% by increasing LTV, reducing customer acquisition cost, and more. Go to the link in the description to check them out and sign up for a free trial today. And now back to the video. So we're now back in the Klaviyo flow, and two other things that we want to check at the trigger level are the trigger filters and flow filters. This stuff is a bit dense, so bear with me. Once you understand this part, you'll be able to do things that go way above and beyond an average store. Let's start with the flow filters. You'll see that Klaviyo already added a couple of those by default. Flow filters allow you to restrict the flow to only certain people. This is a super useful feature. For this particular flow, we only want to be sending it to people who haven't completed the purchase, right? If they finalize their purchase, we want to get them out of this flow. This is what this first flow filter is going to do for us. It says, what someone has done, placed order zero times since starting this flow. If you're confused, here's what it means. 
read this thing as a question. If the answer for a particular subscriber is yes, he or she continues to receive this flow. If the answer is no, they get excluded from the flow. For example, let's say Casey started a checkout, so she entered this flow. Clevy was going to apply this filter at each point in the flow and ask, has Casey placed orders zero times since starting this flow? If the answer is yes, Casey will receive the message. If the answer is no, she will be skipped. To get familiar with flow filters, I encourage you to play around with them a bit. Click on flow filters and to add a new one, click and below the existing filters. The most useful filters will be under the first category, what someone has done or not done. Choose that and then see what options you get. As an example, let's say I wanted to exclude people who requested a refund recently. This group of people might be easy to annoy, so I want to limit my communication with them. So I'm going to start typing refund in the search bar and then select the Shopify metric refunded order. Then change this to zero times and change the timing to in the last 45 days. Then click save. Now, only people who didn't refund their orders in the past 45 days will receive the messages in this flow. If they did refund an order, they will be excluded by this filter. Now, trigger filters work in the same way, but they offer properties that are directly related to the trigger metric. So in our case, if you wanted to filter people based on the properties of their cart, such as cart value, products and cart, and so on, then you would use trigger filters. Okay, let's move on from this boring part to more fun stuff, emails and SMS messages. Let's just quickly check the timing of this first message right here. By default, it's four hours, but for most brands, I find that to be a little bit too long. So I recommend changing it to two hours or something like that. Now let's click on this first email. We're also going to add an SMS to this flow in a second, but let's start with the email for now. Click on this rectangle and then on the left, click edit. On this screen, you get to set the subject line and the preview text. I like to come up with these after I've created the email because ideas usually come much easier after I have already created the email. So for now, I'm going to keep this very generic. You left something behind and we'll come back to it later. On the same screen, you also get to pick the from name and from email address. Okay, so let us finally get to the fun part, creating the email. Let's click on edit email over here. Here are a few key things for the abandoned checkout emails. Number one, in most cases, I recommend not adding a header image. A lot of brands want to do that to make the email look prettier, but that's the wrong move. Can you guess why? In the abandoned cart email, the most converting part is the block with the abandoned product. It converts the best because it's something that the subscriber recognizes because they picked those products. They like them. When we add a header image, we push that product block down below the scroll. Not everyone who opens your emails will scroll through them. The faster the recipient sees the key content in your email after opening, the higher your conversion rate will be. Next, let's change this headline to we've got you to get the recipient feel reassured and taken care of. Okay, so now watch closely. Next comes a very important detail and one that most e-com brands miss personalizing the abandoned cart email with the recipient's first name. Remember how I said that you have the first name for virtually everyone in this flow because of how the trigger is set up? Well, this is where we get to use it. What you need is this magic piece of code that you see on the screen. When you add this code, Clavio will pull the person's first name. The title part in the code will forcefully capitalize the first letter of the name, even if the person didn't do that when they filled out the form. And the default part at the end of this line of code is for cases when a profile doesn't have a first name, just so you can avoid that embarrassing situation with hey, space, then comma, where it's clear that the brand tried to personalize the email, but it backfired. Even though Clavio should have names for virtually everyone in this flow, as I just said, we still use this default just in case. It doesn't hurt. All right, next, you have the abandoned product block. If you've started with a Klaviyo Flow template like I did, this block should already be tailored to your shopping platform and should work well. Let's test it out. Click on preview on the left. You're going to see this window showing users that recently triggered this flow. You can go through a few of them by clicking on this arrow. Let's grab this guy with this one item in his cart. As you can see, the product is showing properly and the product name and other details also look fine. So this is working great. 
I recommend clicking on everything to make sure that the links work fine here too. And by the way, notice how the first name got populated too. Make sure that you check that in your previews. Very importantly, check the button link. It should lead directly to cart or the checkout page. Click and yes, we're on the checkout page, awesome. A few quick tips. Make sure that you preview the email for someone who has multiple products in cart as well. Also, after you preview the email in Klaviyo and check all of the links, send a test to yourself and view the email on your phone. This is very important because the majority of your recipients will open the email on their phones. If you're an overachiever, make sure that you view the email in dark mode as well as in light mode when you are on your phone. Those will look very differently. If the abandoned product block is not working for you and you can't figure out why, the best thing to do is reach out to Klaviyo support. They're usually pretty quick and will help you troubleshoot your particular case. Now I wanna change the copy of this button real quick because return to your cart is way too boring. I'm going to change it to finish my order. I like to use first person pronouns because it's closer to the customer. Okay, so this email is now functioning well, but the design feels very bare. I don't wanna spend too much time on design in this tutorial because I wanna to get to the other flow settings and also show you how to add SMS messages, but I will show you a few quick design things here. First, I want to add an image at the end of the email. I said that I typically don't like having a header image in abandoned cart emails, but that doesn't mean no images at all. The best type of image to add here is a lifestyle photo, ideally with some happy people using your products. Next, I want to increase the size of the font. Font size is one of my pet peeves. I think everything should be a size bigger because even if it's just a little bit too small for me and I have to make like a teeny tiny effort to read, I'm just not going to. And I'm sure lots of other people are the same way. So let's go to styles on the left, find section that says text and change the size from 14 to 16. Then scroll down a little bit, find the section called mobile, find text and change that to 16. I like changing the font sizes here because it applies to the text in the whole email. And here's one last design adjustment. It's a tiny thing, but it makes a huge difference. These text boxes feel a bit claustrophobic. They're a little bit too close to the email's borders. So I'm going to click on the text block, go to block styles, go to padding and add 30 pixels on right and left. Then go to the other text block and do the same thing. Now let's preview again. Okay, although the design is still simple, this email already feels a little bit better put together. One last thing, let's align this product block a little bit better. A exit preview, click on this block and then go to block styles. Table sales, vertical design, select middle from the menu. Save, then click preview again. Nice, this is much better. And again, make sure that you preview this on your phone too, as over 60% of opens will happen on the phone. And if everything looks good, let's move on. Let's click save content. And now we can add the subject line and the preview text. I have a whole video about how to come up with good subject lines. It should be linked on the screen right now and go check it out after this one. I'm going to say I like your style for this subject and for the preview text, which is very important, never skip the preview text, I'm going to use the name of the first product that the person abandoned. It's a little trick that we like to use at Luck & Co. To find the code for that, I need to click on the email again, then click on preview and click on this item over here and grab this code then go back to the preview text and paste it here. With something like this, make sure that you triple check this. You can't see this preview text when you preview in Klaviyo, so you need to send yourself lots and lots of test emails with different products. All right, now let's click done. We're now back to the flow screen and we're going to do something really cool right now. Let's say you wanted to personalize emails based on the product that the person had in cart or you wanted to offer a discount based on the cart value. If the person is shopping for a lot, you give them a bigger discount. Or maybe you want to talk differently to people who are returning customers versus those who are buying from you for the first time. Want to see how to do that? Let me show you, it's actually pretty easy. You will want to use either a conditional split or a trigger split. Here's how to know which one you need. If you want to set a condition based on the current event, meaning this checkout that the subscriber just started, you will want to use the trigger split. For example, 
If you want to send different emails based on the size of the person's cart, you will select the trigger split. Just drag it to where you want it in the flow, usually after a time delay. Now let's configure the split. Click on dimensions and search for value. Now from the next drop down menu, let's select is less than. And in the next box, we get to choose the value ourselves. I'm going to say 50 and save. So now everyone whose cart value is less than $50 is going to go down the yes path. And everyone whose cart value is $50 or more is going to go down this no path. Let's add an email in that right path. I'm actually going to duplicate that first email, which we just edited, so I can start with that template. Let's go back to that email, click these three dots, and then clone. Now let's move this new email to where we want it, which is in the no path below the trigger split. I also like to keep my flow organized, so I'm going to edit this internal name over here. Let's call it abandoned cart email to high value. Let's also rename this other one and call it abandoned cart email to low value. Not only does it help you and your team as you review and edit this flow later, but it also keeps your analytics very organized. If you were to pull detailed reports from Klaviyo or create a segment based on whether someone opened or clicked this email, this is the email name that you will see on the backend of Klaviyo, which is why it's important to name it properly. All right, so from here, you now have two paths, low value and high value. If you want all of the next emails to be different for these two groups of recipients, you just keep adding emails to these separate paths like this. But let's say you only wanted to make these two emails different and the third email in the flow should be the same for everybody. In this case, what you do is you connect the two paths back together by dragging and dropping this little arrow icon. Okay, let's delete all of these extra emails for now. And now you know how the trigger split works. The conditional split works exactly the same. It's just based on conditions that are not about the current event, but about recipient's past behavior, their profile properties, and so on. For example, let's create a split based on whether the person who is abandoning the cart is a returning customer or a new shopper. First, drag this conditional split into the flow. There are a lot of different options and sub options here. You can explore them at your own time. In our case, we want to select what someone has done or not done. Then among metrics, select placed order at least once over all time. Click save. So now everyone who goes down the yes path is a returning customer because they have already placed an order before. And everyone who goes down the no path is a new customer. Pretty cool, right? So you can make your returning customers feel special by saying thanks for coming back and potentially giving them a deal or reminding them that they have rewards points if you're using a rewards program. For new customers, you will focus much more on social proof in your emails to establish that trust in the first place. Pro tip, whenever I audit Klaviyo accounts, I often see this mistake. A conditional split after every single email checking for whether a user has purchased or not. The idea behind this is correct. We don't want to be sending these emails to people who have completed their order. Here's the deal though. If you have the flow filter that we set up at the very beginning, you are covered and you don't need a conditional split after every email. You can keep your flow structure clean and save your splits for something more meaningful. Wow, look at us. We now know how flow filters work, how to set up and personalize an abandoned cart email, and how to add trigger splits and conditional splits. If you found any part of this valuable so far, please give this video a like right now. It goes such a long way. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you get notified when we release another value-packed tutorial like this. One of the last things that I want to teach you in this video is how to add an SMS message to your flow. All you need to do is drag and drop SMS from the left into your flow. If you're not seeing SMS on the list on the left, that means that you don't have SMS set up in your Klaviyo yet. I have a dedicated video about how to do that, which should be linked on the screen right now. Go check it out once we're done here. So drag and drop this SMS into the flow. Now, here's what I want to do. For those people who have consented to receive SMS, I want to send the abandoned cart SMS first and then follow up with an email. And at the same time, I don't want to delay the email for those people who are not on the SMS list. So here's how we're going to achieve that. Let's add a conditional split after the trigger. 
From this drop-down, let's select if someone is or is not consented to receive SMS. And then change this next one to is not so that our left path is for email only people and our right side path is for SMS people. Now let's click save. Then drag this SMS to the right side path. We're going to set it up in just a second. Before we do that, let's make sure that we add a time delay before the SMS because we don't want people to receive it the moment they start the checkout. Let's set it to 45 minutes. And now let's connect the two paths so that after receiving the SMS, people continue to receive the emails from the flow, like this. Let's quickly check the flow of the things. Someone starts a checkout, we wait 45 minutes, then we send them this SMS. Then we wait two more hours and send them the email. And remember, they only receive the email if they haven't purchased yet from the SMS, and our flow filter ensures that. If they're not consented to SMS, then we just wait two hours and send them the email. Then we wait 20 more hours and send them the next email personalized to the value of their card. Okay, everything checks out, so high five. Now let's go back to that SMS message. Let's make sure the internal title is descriptive, so I'm going to change it to abandoned card SMS1. Then click configure content. Let's write a quick message together. Hey, first name, still thinking about that product name? We saved your entire card for the next 48 hours. Go look at it again, or better yet, take these home. And then a pointing down emoji. Now we want that product name to populate with their actual product name. We can grab it from this little preview bubble. Let's open it up. And the first thing under the section items is the name of the product and card. Click on it and Clavio will copy the dynamic code to your clipboard. Now let's paste it into the message and watch what happens. Nice, like magic. Make sure that you click on a few other events here in the preview bubble to make sure that it works across all of your product titles. Next, we'll need to add the image of the abandoned product. We'll need a similar piece of code for that, so let's grab it right here. Search the page for the word image. Let's try this first one. Same idea, click on it, and Clavio copies the dynamic code. Now let's click Add Media, then choose Dynamic Image on the left. Paste this code from your clipboard, save, and voila, this works. Let me just switch through a few different previews to double check. One, two, three, great, all works perfectly. Now I realized that I forgot to add the link. No point in sending this message without it. While we have this preview bubble expanded, let's search for the word checkout. One of the results should be the checkout URL. Let's copy this code and then drop it into our message. Now, I don't think there's a way to check whether this URL works properly directly in Clavio in the browser, so you will have to send yourself a test. To do that, just click Send Preview at the top, type in your phone number, and then click the link from the message that you receive on your phone. Look at us, we now have a brand new shiny SMS in our flow. Great work. Let's click on Save Content in the corner and go back to our flow. We're almost done here. Just one tiny thing left, sort of like a cool down after a long workout. I promise it will be quick and easy. Let's check all of these additional settings on emails and SMS. We have smart sending, UTM tracking, and additional filters. If you click on them, you can go and read about what each of them means. I don't wanna make this video too long, so I won't spend too much time here. I'll just say that I like to keep my smart sending off for flow emails. I turn smart sending on for almost all of the campaigns, but I keep it off for flow messages. UTM tracking, I always just keep on. It helps with Google Analytics, and even if you don't have that set up yet, it doesn't hurt to have this on. And finally, in rare cases, we will want to add an additional filter to a particular message. Remember that flow filters apply to everything in the flow. If you want an additional filter in a specific message in this flow, you'll use that setting here. And for SMS, we also have quiet hours, which we definitely want on always. That's it. After you're done with all emails and SMS messages and have double checked your flow settings, all that is left to do is turn everything to active. To do that, click Update Action Statuses in the corner and select Live from the drop-down menu. If you want to pause a particular message while everything else is active, just go to that message and change it from Live to Draft or Manual. Once your flow is live, don't forget to turn off your abandoned cart automation in Shopify or your shopping platform. You don't want to be sending two abandoned cart flows at the same time. 
Whoa, now we are fully done. You are such a champion. Give yourself a virtual pat on the back. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you're still here, I would truly appreciate a little like on this video and a comment, even if it's a winky face. Those comments really help us tremendously in reaching more people and continuing to put out this content for free. Thanks a million, and I will see you in the next one.